Well, uh, I, I'm Malcolm Green, and um, I work in the organometallic chemistry. I was his first student in, to a point when he arrived in Imperial College, England, after being in Harvard. Well, it was um, a really um, busy time, exciting time. I mean, it was the start of the, the whole of the area of organometallic chemistry, which is the biggest area of chemistry to, since that time. And um, he was in there at the very early stage. And the other notable scientist at that time was a German fisher um, at the Berlin. And um, they both competed with each other and um, with the subject. And, they got and shared the Nobel Prize later on. Although well, they didn't discover ferrocene, but um, they did pioneering work with it. And I was a uh, very early age, so all the work I did was pioneering because it was just a you couldn't miss because it, nobody knew how big it was in those days. But we didn't sort of, you know, appreciate retrospectively. We, you know, we just did did it, and um, it, it turned out that it was exciting in the sense that it was very new. I mean, you know, we, we had to work with air sensitive compounds. Uh, my first compound I made was bicyclopentadienyl rhenium hydride, which um, was the first hydride to be made. And uh, um, at that time, there was, there was only one NMR machine in Europe. And that was in Wilkinson's lab. There was one in America, and that was in Harvard. And he, and um, so there were two, two NMR machines. And that was a real boost for the characterization of organometallic chemistry. So metal hydrides have a very classical high field shift more than all organo, organic molecules and other hydrogen systems. So it's very easy to find whether you've made a hydride, you don't have to separate anything, you just put it in at the end of the MR machine and there's a peak out on, on the right, bang, in that area, one of the compounds in your product is a hydride. So, so that's sort of a pr primitive age. So it was a it was an area which was rich for discovery. Wilkinson used to come in there regularly. Sometime in the morning, he used to get in about nine o'clock and. He'd come in the lab and he would say, well, what to know? And um, he wants to know what would be done, what anything he discovered. And he would, sometimes he'd come in and say, with an, I've got it, you know, with an idea. Malcolm, he'd say, I want you to do this. And, um, and, and, and I would do it. And do it. 
and he, was, he, he had an idea about fixing nitrogen and he said I want you to do this and so I set up all the equipment and apparatus and so on. It didn't work, I mean it didn't make, it didn't fix nitrogen but it's, it was a very early stage, to, it was a good idea but it didn't work. And um, so um, I can't, can't think of um, more exciting a time to be uh, doing research. And um, we were, you know, NMR machine was only just discovered, infrared machines were very poor in resolution, they were, they were, they were, they were sodium chloride ones and then blocks of sodium chloride for detraction and then there were blocks of potassium chloride and now then they eventually they became modern ones which is with other techniques and so on. And then that, but there they were LMR machines, there were UV machines, they were all new machines. Um, and, and made so we, we if you to get the uh, stay ahead in the field you have to had to get hold of these machines and the mass spectra and so on x-rays x-rays were well known but it took a it, it took a student um, well, a student doing x-ray structures you do, could do probably two molecules or three molecules, quite simple molecules, in three years. Now, you can, with a, with a computer and modern x-ray machines, you can give your sample to someone after breakfast and by tea time, you'll know a high structure, five hours or some, something like that. And so that's how. But we we we, we had to, to get um, a star member of staff to get an X-ray machine and do the structures for Wilkinson, and so. Characterization was not always very easy because um, I met, mistakes were made for this reason. No, we got to know him very well. He did it. He didn't. His office door was always open. He was. We used to. Um, You know, we used to talk to him freely. We talked to him. We we could call him either Prof or Jeff. Um, he, he wasn't the modern how many professors are and, and, and aloof and so on. He, he was he's, he came in the lab and chatted and so on. And when, when I was interviewed by him. I was went up for for his student. Um, he was sitting in the Harvard chair, which he brought over from Harvard, which is a sort of wooden stool type chair. And he and his with his feet up on the desk of his the, the desk, smoking. And he said, "Sit down, sit down over there." And then he produced some uh, glass tubes sealed on a, on a bit of cardboard. He said, do you know what these are? So I said, no. He said, these are the CP compounds of all the rare earth elements. So I said, oh, very interesting. And he, um, and, uh, and then he picked up another one and he said this is a CP compounds of, of this. 
and so on. And then he asked me one, two questions, and then he said, well, if you um, get a first class degree or an upper second in your exams, I have money from an industrial company to support your research. And then, um, have you any questions, he said. I thought about it, I left me alone. And I left. But I did have a question, which I thought better not to ask. What's CP? <laughs> Uh, it's a true story. Of course, it's cyclopentadiene, um, but it, I, I, you know, he, yeah, he, he had just arrived um, from Harvard. He, he, I was his first student, and um, I, I wasn't at, the, at the posh university. Um, I had, I did got my P, did BSc trained at Acton Technical College, which didn't train many people for London University, but they did physics and chemistry. You could take the external London exams, and that's what I did. So as I, they, they, I thought they were teaching the chemistry very well, and, so, and, and I, I got an upper second. So um, I, had, I, I went, took Jeff's invitation to um, to come to because I I thought I'd like to go to a real university rather than that technical college, Imperial College, is a famous university, and um, and I had no idea that, of, that I, how lucky I was to work with Wilkinson because of the study. You know, it was um, everything was new. So after I got a PhD, I know about NMR more than the people did in the inorganic chemistry department at Oxford, and that wasn't very much, but I knew it um, because they, you know, they didn't do NMR at that time. So. Um, so I was, so I, Wilkinson was, Wilkinson um, came to me, he said I've just had a telephone call from um, Professor Emma Leas, who was the Professor of Inorganic History at Cambridge. So I was Cambridge. And um, he, he said he wants, Emma Leas wants to have a, member of my group to teach organometallic chemistry to his students and he recommended anybody so he he recommended they look at me and Bill Griffiths who was another he got a, who got a first class degree at Imperial College and was a, and was a very good scientist and we both were interviewed and um, Bill Griffiths was working for Jack Lewis, and Jack Lewis wasn't working on organometallic chemistry, but he was working on chemistry and so on, in organic, not on organometallic chemistry. And, um, and they wanted organometallic chemistry, so they took me. So I went to Cambridge. So Wilkinson, and Wilkinson, and I stayed on with it as a one-year postdoc with Wilkinson. And everybody knew him. We used to. I can tell you with We made a tape recorder, which had about four of the students competing to put things on it, and um, it started off by. Um, Martin Bennett, who was a second year DPhil student, PhD student, that they call them in, in Peel, which, which um, since the dawn of time, or say, um, something about 
science, and, and, and then Jeffrey Wilkinson, who was a well-known, quite well-known, reasonably well-known in, in organic chemistry. And, 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 then, and, and, and then there was the next. And um, on the occasion of his birthday, um, we were to, 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 uh, want to greet him. Dennis Evans will, is, will now talk. And there was a silence. And then, ah, he's not in yet, was recorded. Dennis Evans never arrived in the lab before 11.30. But he did work at night, um, so it's, it's uh, and then in the end it was um, we we all saying happy birthday, dear Wilkinson, happy birthday, what's new? <laughs> and um, now in that time, at that actual time, the the, the same tape recorder was hidden in on the curtain behind in his office. The the power label, the power wire was taken out uh, outside and the switch was there. We switched it on at about 11.30. Cotton was in the, the office. He'd, he'd flown over for three weeks to finalise the, the, the working and writing of the famous Cotton and Wilkinson um, in organic chemistry textbook, and they were there working on this, and suddenly this, this since the dawn of time from Martin Bennett, 